G'day folks and welcome to this week's episode of the Shipwreck Coast and Under. This week we're going to start talking about the wreck of the Falls of Halidar. Now she was travelling from New York to Melbourne and then on to Sydney and she had 29 people on board. She was 83.9 metres long and was wrecked in 1908. Now she's wrecked and she lies on the bottom of the ocean about 2 kilometres west of the small town of Peterborough in Victoria on the Great Ocean Road. Hope you enjoy this week's episode and I'll see you soon. It's about 8.30 in the morning at the moment, and as you can see the sea conditions have dropped right off again. Uh, last night when we tried to make it around to the wreck side of the Falls of Halidar, obviously the sea was too rough and we had to turn back. But this morning it's nice and flat again, and about 100 metres from here, 10 metres below the water, lies the remains of the Falls of Halidar. Now the wreck site's about a 10 minute boat ride from Boat Bay, and about 2 kilometres west of Peterborough. Now the Falls of Halidar, she was travelling from New York to Melbourne and then on to Sydney. And the man in charge of the ship was a Captain Thomas. And he had a crew with him of 28 men. Now she was 83.9 metres long, 12.7 metres wide and weighed 2,085 tonnes. But probably the most important thing about her was that she needed 7.3 metres of water to stay afloat. And on the night of the 14th of November 1908, unfortunately, 100 metres from here, 7.3 metres of water is not what she had. Now it was about 3am in the morning the ship hit the rocks head here. And one of the main problems they had that night was the fog. And this was making navigating difficult. Now the second mate was on duty at the time and his name was a Mr T Griffin. And he went below and notified the captain that he thought they were getting too close to the land. The captain then came up on deck and had a look. A few moments later, the fog lifted and the Falls of Halidale, nice and gently, as soft as can be, ran up on the rocks and settled down for the last time. And out of sheer luck, the sea was so flat that night that once the captain had ordered the crew to put the lifeboats in the water, he and his 28 men paddled away from the ship and safely out to sea. And if you're wondering what the ship looks like, spread out across the bottom, 97 years after she sunk, but there is one thing you can do. You can grab your snorkel, you can grab your goggles, jump in the water and take a look for yourself. One of the first things you notice when you jump into the water in the Falls of Halidar is that like most of the other shallow wrecks in this area, most of the wreckage is overgrown with seaweed and marine growth, which usually makes it a great place to see small fish and marine life. Now one of the first things you see here on this ship are the ship's large bollards. Now, they were used to hold the vessel up against the wharfs and jetties when she arrived in different ports around the world. The crew would attach one end of their large rope to the bollards the other end to the wharf so the ship wouldn't drift away from the jetty when it was been loaded and unloaded with cargo. But as you can see now, they have been torn off the ship and are now crushed under a large section of the hull and are used for nothing more than hiding up the roof to a hiding place for small fish. Make out the large anchors that now line the weed that were once used to hold the large ship in position in the ports as she waited for her turn to be loaded and unloaded by the busy men that manned the wharfs around the world. There are large coils of fencing wire that now stand alone, still stacked as they were loaded on the ship in 1908. You can see now though that they are solid crustaceans, but they're still stacked exactly how they were originally loaded. It's just now the ship has rotted away from around them. There are large sections of the mast that lie across the wreckage, but now instead of holding up acres of sail on the great ship, they lie alone on the bottom of the ocean as home for small marine life. There are thousands of slate roofing tiles 
once intended to be used on the roofs of new homes and businesses throughout Victoria. But again, like everything else, just lie on the bottom of the ocean as they were originally stacked into the hull of the ship all those years ago for her voyage from New York to Australia. And like most of the other cargo aboard the forts of Halidar, unfortunately, it only made it to a submerged ledge on the shipwrecked coast. So close to its destination, yet still so far. And if you were wondering what else the Falls of Halliday was carrying across to its new destination of Australia, she was carrying 13,378 pieces of oak and walnut timber, 56,673 roofing tiles, 15,000 cases of benzoin, 280 bars and reels of paper, 130 barrels of lubricating oil, 400 barrels of plaster, 1,350 boxes of clothing pins, 5,673 cores and bundles of wire, 600 stoves, 100 barrels of resin, 240 barrels of glucose, 20 barrels of clocks, and 22 boxes of medicine. And all of it, every single bit, ended up right here. Ten minutes below the water, less than two minutes from the small town of Peterborough, on the Great Ocean Road. Now as you can see, there's still plenty to look at if you just come down and make the effort.